what I'm curious about is like what caused this shift in you to think about UFOs oh. and UFO reports as being credible? Because w w we're talking yeah. theoretically, and you're talking about your understanding of dimensions. Because I thought it was not. I thought it was a smoke screen that we were using to do aerospace engineering projects. I thought it was like Operation oh. Fortitude or Op Operation Bodyguard, right. and so it's like, okay, please don't bother me with your sci-fi stories. It's space opera, you know, for the same reason that I don't go into a Scientology center and spend all my time thinking about Xenu, I'm not going to spend all my time worried about space opera. And what changed? Meeting an enormous number of very sober, very grown-up people who seem to be changed, alter, and believe that this is real. I have met an enormous number of people now who had personal, firsthand, like, sober people who've had crazy first-hand encounters. I don't understand how they're doing this as actors. Very often it's unwanted, it ruins their lives. It's sad. You know, I ended up in San Marino uh, at Lou Elizondo's invitation, and then Lou couldn't come, so I ended up speaking in Lou's place at a UFO meeting, it was crazy. But I met so many people who were just like, Eric, you know, let me explain my experience to you. And I'm just not prepared for these highly detailed stories that have so much similarity one to the next. You know, like the Skinwalker Ranch thing on uh, the History Channel is look, looks incredibly junky put out by Prometheus Entertainment. I know Brandon Fugel, the owner of the ranch. And I know Eric Bard, we keep talking via phone. Eric Bard is like, almost the only other person who has some idea of what differential forms are, tensor analysis is. He's a sober, normal human being sitting out there on a ranch trying to figure out what the hell he's looking at. I don't think he's lying to me. And I don't think Brandon is lying to me. And then you hear their stories, like the, the Gary Nolan thing. I was completely unprepared. Have you dealt with Gary? No. I watched him on Lex, though. I think Gary told me a story where he's like, dealing with a subject. He's a medical guy, and that's how he got involved with this. And, you know, somehow the medical, pers the medical person that he is is talking to a subject who says, you know, I encountered a spinning disc in the sky or whatever, and a ball of light comes in. Oh, no, brother, another one of these stories. And he's like, and, you know, the ball of light entered my body, and I was in pain, but I was, it was okay, and it exited and whatever. And then Gary looks at the person, and there's a path of necrosis exactly where the person describes this thing entering <laughs> and exiting. Like, what are you, are you like tell me what the level of conspiracy is here that would be necessary to get all of this indirect evidence and this is the the basic puzzle of ufos zero responsible adult direct evidence in the public domain zero so far as i can tell more indirect evidence than you can possibly imagine with sober normal people claiming things that i can't believe firsthand stuff and then, and then it gets weirder and worse from that. I would love to keep this just at metallic flying objects. But like, no, it, it's always going to be like, no, they, they go into the water. And then, you know, the next level is like cattle mutilation. It's like, oh, please don't bring in cattle mutilation. Oh, yeah, the stapes, you know, the smallest bone in the body, the three bones that make mammals mammals. Uh, you know, one of them seems to be frequently missing. And then like Paul Hellyer and... Chaim Eshed and I don't know, Ben Rich. Then there's this like crazy level where the former Canadian, Canadian defense minister believes that there's a galactic federation, the humans are in contact, and the is head of the Israeli – it's like, I, enough. I can't handle it. I don't know what we're looking at, and I'd love to keep it at something sober, and I see zero direct evidence. And if we're going to go on the direct evidence, Elon is right. It's bullshit. Tough luck. But I don't know how this amount of indirect evidence occurs because I don't think the government is capable of faking this. On the other hand, if we go by the indirect evidence, how is it that none of us have, like even the center of mass coordinates of this Tic Tac, you, you'll, you'll never hear me talking about the Tic Tac or the Zimbabwe kids or whatever. Why? Because since the mid-70s, we've been able to do CGI in Star Wars that looks much more realistic than any video I've ever seen. So. You, you can show me any video and I don't care. It's just not interesting to me. We don't have center of mass coordinates for this Tic Tac that's claimed by the U.S. government over the Nimitz. Please. Oh, because it's sensitive. We don't... Stop it. Shut up. 
Hush. So is it they don't have it? They won't release it? No, no, no. It? They claim it's not released. It can't be released to the public. Right. And I'm like, so downsample it. De-res it. It's not even our ship, people. You're claiming it's something you can't understand, and you have the 3D coordinates, and I can't play with it in a model on, like, Google Earth or SketchUp or something? Go F yourselves. You're going to stovepipe this need to know. I have a need to know. I'm trying to do science. Is that the most compelling one to you? The Tic Tac? Take your pick. You it has the most, uh, the most qualified people watching it. Yeah. But I don't, I don't want to get involved with Go Fast or Gimbal or this or that or the Phoenix Lights or the Belgian. It's like, stop teasing me. Yeah. This is the Meredith Baker problem. When I was a 14-year-old guy, I thought Meredith Baker was the hottest thing in the world. I, I wanted to go out is. with her. What? It's a girl you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And every time I asked her out, she was like, I really want to go out with you, but I really have to wash my hair, or I really mm. have to hang out with my hair. I was like, this is not going very well. At some point, somebody pulls me aside and said, Eric, you're Jewish. She's Mormon. Get the hint. She, loves, she, she likes you. But there was nothing going to happen. Okay, I get it. This is Meredith Baker. You don't want, for some reason, to tell me what's actually going on. Then don't waste my time. Don't spend my credibility. Do you think that they don't want to release the information because they're still trying to digest it themselves and they don't want it to get out publicly and get into the hands of China? I'm not China smart enough or, to figure this out. I believe... Wouldn't, if there was something that was beyond our understanding, you want, you, you would, want me, okay. you want that data to be released? Can we have a glass of something so that I can hide behind the fact that I had a sip okay. of alcohol? All right, I'm going to take a leak again and All we'll right. uh, come back with ice and alcohol for Eric. Perfect. Apparently it's a Thank drunk. you. One possibility is we did a lot of bad stuff and we cannot get out of the fact that if we release what it is that we actually know and what has been going on, there's going to be a lot of consequence. Bad stuff as in? Uh, maybe people got killed. Maybe people were made crazy when they weren't crazy because they saw things. So if you think about, um, you know about deconfliction? Deconfliction. Yeah. No. If you have a blue on blue situation, that means that two official representatives of the US government are stumbling over each other. You've got local law enforcement, like the first scene of the Matrix um, is, you know, suddenly got really scared? fucking intimidating, Joe. Now I'm scared. Um, Just ask him what a real news. news. Oh, wow. Nicely done. U.S. alerted Russia to Biden's Ukraine visit for deconfliction purposes. 